Despite ESPN giving this Rondo trade for the Cavs a C, stay tuned to see why I think it's a move that'll pay off for GM Kobe Altman. Ricky Rubio is having a stellar season, but given they'll be without him, the Cleveland Cavaliers made a serious trade by acquiring the former champion and passing legend Rajon Rondo. Considering Garland and Rubio had one of the best two-man lineup net ratings across the entire association, replacing the Spaniard with an aging yet stable ball handler who still got decent speed and of course a Hall of Fame IQ, that makes things very intriguing for Cleveland. Today we'll check in on the breakout Cavs from the rookie sensation Evan Mobley, wily veterans like Kevin Love, to up-and-coming youngins like Darius Garland, Jarrett Allen, and Laurie Markkinen. Stick around to see what the Cavs had to give up in return for playoff Rondo and how he affects the fifth seeded team in the Forest City. Before continuing, only 10.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. The vid you're watching right now is the fourth Cavaliers video I've posted this season and that's something I really didn't think I'd be saying before 2021-22 kicked off. But as I mentioned in those prior vids, these Cavs have completely shocked the world, and even when their best player on paper, Colin Sexton, went down early in the year, Cleveland continued to break out of their shell in the post-LeBron era. Having said that, no flight comes without turbulence, and basketball fans in Cleveland have been experiencing a lot of it recently. After winning seven of their last eight games prior to this stretch, the team went on a three-game losing streak from December 28th to 31st, with two of those L's taking place consecutively without the injured Rubio. But Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, Laurie Markkinen, and Kevin Love combined for 74 without Darius Garland, and of course Rubio, to earn the sword of bounce-back W against the Pacers in their last game on Sunday. Garland entered health and safety six days ago, and should be back for Cleveland's next game on Tuesday. But from here on out, the Cavs aren't only going to be forced to make up for the services of Colin Sexton, who led them in scoring last season, but a player who's greatly contributed to their breakthrough campaign in the facilitating Spaniard, Ricky Rubio. We're going to get to my answer for the potential concerns that people are having for aging Rondo, but regardless, GM Kobe Altman deserves some respect for making such a timely pickup, as right when one of Cleveland's top passers goes down, Kobe immediately swooped in to trade for the man who's 14th all-time in total assists and 4th among active players. The future Hall of Famer Rondo won't offer Cleveland immediate help because he's currently subject to the NBA's health and safety protocols, having been placed in them on December 26th. However, as soon as Rondo clears, he gives the Cavaliers a veteran leader at the point. In his second tenure with the Lakers, where he helped win the NBA championship in the bubble, Rondo had seen sporadic action as a backup point guard, but can Rondo still help the Cavaliers at age 35? We're going to take a look. It was surprising that LA was willing to part ways with Rondo so quickly, but it made them the second team to trade Rondo mid-season in as many years, as the Atlanta Hawks, who signed Rajon in 2020 free agency, dealt him at last year's trade deadline. After he was moved to the Clippers, Rondo gave them a lift over the final month and a half of the 2021 regular season. Over 18 games for the Clippers last year, Rajon made 58% of his two-point attempts and 43% of his three-pointers for the Clippers, solidifying their point guard spot behind starter Reggie Jackson. But that kind of shooting didn't carry over whatsoever to the postseason when Rondo found himself out of the rotation in the Clippers' run to the conference finals. He played just 17 minutes over their last two wins over the Dallas Mavericks in the first round, and 15 total after Game 1 against the Utah Jazz. Again, Rondo was benched during the conference finals, not seeing any action over the Clippers in the last three games. Despite giving up a second round pick to get Rondo from the Hawks at the deadline, the Clippers would move on from him in the summer as part of a deal to add Eric Bledsoe. Rondo was bought out by the Memphis Grizzlies, ultimately landing back with the Lakers. The soon-to-be 36-year-old Rondo will have big shoes to fill, as Ricky Rubio just tragically tore his ACL but was having an extremely productive season and was fitting in perfectly with what the Cavaliers had going. The impressive young core of Cleveland Cavaliers had found a tremendous leader at point guard in Ricky. Offensively, he was in career-high territory despite coming off the bench. The Cavs currently rank second in defensive rating behind Golden State and first when Rubio and Garland are present on the court together. The duo does a commendable job on the offensive end as well, 
In the 468 minutes that the duo shared, the Cavs had a net rating of plus 16.7, the highest in the NBA. The sample size of these two playing together and individually is large enough to trust the stats. Their impact is not as strong individually, but when playing alongside each other, Ricky Rubio and Darius Garland were a perfect fit. Rondo missed a ton of time on health and safety, but before that, he was averaging 16 minutes over 18 games played for the LA Lakers this season. While Rondo was struggling on the year, that's mostly due to the fact that he started to be a poor fit in the Lakers system and wasn't given too much opportunity. While Rondo thrived in LA during the championship run in 2019-20, as the Lakers personnel changed with a playmaker in Taylor Horton Tucker developing and Rob Palinka signing Melo, who needs the ball in his hands, Rondo took a back seat in Frank Vogel's rotation. Conversely, the Cavs lost nearly seven dimes after Rubio went down, and the former All-Star Rajan is going to be heavily trusted in Cleveland. Given he'll likely get anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes per game, Rajan's going to get a ton of reps under his belt like he hasn't been able to in many other situations in the Cavs system. That's going to allow him to find his flow offensively, and it may take some time for Rajan to adjust to coach J.B. Bickerstaff's playsets, but once he does and gets into the shape he needs to be in, Rondo on the Garland and Mobley-led Cavs could be scary. If you're GM Kobe Altman, regardless of how Rondo plays, you have to love the mentorship that the future face of the franchise Darius Garland is going to be getting. First, he got to learn from Rubio, and now he gets to learn from another all-time great facilitator of this generation in Rondo. Considering Garland's already proved that he can thrive next to another ball-dominant guard in the backcourt, that's why, despite the concern about Rajan's age and the fact that he's been given up on midseason in back-to-back -back years, I think Rajan could end up having an impact in Cleveland. It's not like Rubio was shooting 50-plus percent from the field. He had some big-time games. In fact, he was only shooting four percentage points better from the field than Rondo was. Don't get me wrong, Ricky's the far more valuable player at this stage of their careers between he and Rondo. But that doesn't mean picking up Rajan wasn't a fantastic, timely decision by the Cavs' front office. I don't think they're getting enough credit for it. Yes, you had to give up a shooter in Denzel Valentine to the Lakers, who's going to be bought out by LA to create an extra roster spot for the Lakers, and Valentine's going to be headed to sign with a conference rival for Cleveland in New York on a free agent deal. But the Cavs couldn't have lost all that playmaking from Rubio and not have made a move. Maybe Rondo just needed a change of scenery to shake him up, and who knows, in the backcourt with Garland, who thrived operating next to a playmaker just like Rondo, I think that'll help Rajan's game. Don't forget, in the Lakers' 2020 title run, this was a man who averaged 9 points, 7 assists, 1.4 steals on 45% shooting from the field, taking 3 triples per night, and knocking down an elite 40% of them over 16 bubble playoff games. When a coach gives Rondo trust and he's able to establish a flow, he can perform at an utterly special rate that you can't ignore the potential of. But why or why not does Rajan help the Cavaliers? Best answer down below in the comments earns next video shoutout. The top five commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st are going to receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is TJ Views, who says what makes DeRozan really special is his ability to do well, especially in the fourth quarter, since that quarter is crucial to the game and determining of who wins the game. Thanks for every answer. You guys are truly the best Hoopstock community on YouTube. This was DFlow. Hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.